first part of the problem, we're given that f of x is equal to x to the power of 1 over x, and we need to differentiate this. Um, this is quite a common technique. What we do first is rewrite f of x equals e to the ln of x to the 1 over x. And of course, um, that's the same as the function we started with, but now we can bring that power of 1 over x uh, to the front of the ln x to give us that f of x is equal to e to the 1 over x times ln x, in other words, it's equal to e to the power of ln x over x. Once it's in this form, it's fairly straightforward to differentiate by using the combination um, of the chain rule and the quotient rule. So I'll do that next. OK, and I'll pause just here. So what I've done is I've said, uh, covering up the ln x over x in my thumb, so e to my thumb, um, will give me e to my thumb times by the derivative of what I'm hiding with my thumb. In other words, the derivative of ln x over x, for which I have used the quotient rule. Um, v times du by dx, which is x times 1 over x, minus u times dv by dx, which of course is then going to be ln x times by 1, divided by v squared. And you should see I get this expression. I'll tidy it up a little bit. First of all, just taking care inside the bracket. Um, and I'll take care of the... Uh, you'll also notice I've rewritten the front part now as e to the ln x to the 1 over x because I'm going to write that again now just as uh, x to the 1 over x times by um, 1 minus ln x over x squared. Um, and what I can now do is get the answer in the book by just using the law of indices with the x to the 1 over x and the x squared uh, and in fact, that will give me the following. OK, so perhaps you want to pause there and just make sure you're happy with how I've done that last step. So, part B, we need the second derivative. Um, let me just let this run through for a second, and I'll tell you what I've done. OK, it looks quite messy, um, but if you follow it through part by part, it should be fairly straightforward. Uh, I've highlighted in red the actual form of the first derivative that I'm going to use in order to get the second derivative. And this is now going to require uh, the product rule, uh, amongst other tricks along the way. Um, so what I've done using the product rule is, first of all, left the x to the power of 1 over x alone, and I've differentiated the v, if you will, which is the 1 minus ln x over x squared. And again, I've used the quotient rule to do this. So uh, v times du by dx minus u times dv by dx all over x squared. OK, now for the next part of the product rule. So I've now left the second part of the function alone, the v, which is the 1 minus ln x over x squared. And I had to multiply this by the derivative of x to the 1 over x, which, of course, I've already got the answer to uh, from the first part of the uh, question. And so... I have used the part I've underlined in red and simply substituted that in. Now, I'm not going to bother simplifying this because essentially all I need to do is to evaluate this at e. And you should see straight away that anything that involves the 1 minus ln e will in fact give me a 0. So it's actually going to be quite easy to evaluate. Um, OK, let's evaluate the various bits and bobs uh, at x equal to e then. So the first one is very straightforward. Uh, f of e is e to the 1 over e. And next, we've got the first derivative evaluated at e. And, of course, one of the products in there is 1 minus ln x, and 1 minus the ln of e is the same as 1 minus 1, which gives me the 0. Uh, and then I've got the uh, second derivative evaluated at e. OK, sorry about that. A uh, quick interruption. So the second derivative... Uh, evaluated at e uh, will actually be quite straightforward. So as we said, anything involving 1 minus ln of x, uh, which will be 1 minus the ln of e here, will simply give a 0. So hopefully you can see what we'll be left with is simply e to the power of 1 over e times by, and the only bit we're going to need is this very first bit here. Um, <clears throat> so I simplified down the, where you see x squared times by minus 1 over x, which, of course, when simplified, will just give you uh, minus x, uh, and then the denominator x to the 4, and everything else there is 0. So that gives me an x equal to e minus e over e to the 4, which can then be simplified 
as minus e to the power of 1 over e minus 3. Um, have a good look at that. I've kind of jumped a couple of steps, but it really is just processing. OK. We're now in a position to write out the required Taylor expansion, uh, Taylor series um, centred around E, and we get the following answer. So, on to part C. So, just rewriting what we've got so far, uh, and for part C we're asked to find the maximum value. Uh, this is in fact the uh, right hand side, the series part is actually just a, a quadratic, and indeed a negative quadratic, so it will indeed have a maximum. And furthermore, the maximum will occur when uh, the derivative of this is equal to zero. Uh, very easy to differentiate. The first term is just a constant, uh, and then we'll simply get the following. And of course, what value of x makes this zero is simply x is equal to e. So we've now got x is equal to e. We're going to put that back into the uh, right-hand side of our series expansion, uh, and you should see that will give us that a maximum value uh, of our series expansion will occur um, and give us e to the power of 1 over e minus e to the power of 1 over e minus 3 all over 2 times by e minus e squared. The e minus e will cancel out to give us a 0, so we'll be left with e to the power of 1 over e. We've got to check that this is the same uh, maximum as the function f of x gives us, and to get the maximum of f of x we need to solve f dash of x equal to 0. We had f dash of x from the first part, so we need to solve 1 minus ln x over uh, x squared minus 1 over x is equal to 0. And of course that will happen when the numerator is 0. In other words, when ln x equals 1. In other words, when x is equal to e. If we now put um, x equal to e back into the original function, then we get e to the 1 over e. And so indeed the maximums are the same as desired.